Hello, hello, dear friends, and uh, here's some very high-tech arranging by me of my uh, arting environment. Anyways, welcome to Inktober Day 5, and the topic is build. And I hope that you have been having as much fun as I have been having over the last few days. It is early days yet, but we achieve these goals one day at a time. So before we talk about build, I wanted to just share it's a very strange name guys um if you are not south african um e even if you are south african you guys are gonna just have to forgive me on this one but i was heavily inspired by uh an artist called j h pierniev and i'm probably butchering that with my very sad very very english Afrikaans accent <laughs> um, and yeah he's he's just gonna have to forgive me but in all of his awesomeness I'm I'm sure he will uh, basically he's a printer from South Africa who does liner prints of trees and he normally does things like acacia trees and I don't know like different thorn trees those very very south african very african savanna trees and it's amazing he uses light and shadow absolutely beautifully and i kind of was inspired to try and do that with ink and when you're doing trees always remember keep it loose and make it up because trees are very very natural and 100 percent organic <laughs> and yeah, they don't care. They they just grow however they want to grow. So there is no right or wrong. There is just a man-made construct of what a tree looks like, which is normally far too rigid, as are all things that human beings devise. Anyway, so that was my inspiration for the tree. And now I'm going to talk to you about why I chose to do this for build. So I am making a lovely fine brown lump on the page. And yeah, we're done. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> so this is actually a termite mound. And I learned about this when I was at the Kruger Park like a month ago. And it was really, really interesting. They were talking about how for rhino poaching, which is obviously a big South African concern at the moment, they were considering look, using uh, heat sensing cameras that were attached to drones and the weird thing is that when they did this, there's a certain kind of tree and termite mounds <laughs> which produce so much heat that they actually obliterated <laughs> all the other heat signatures and just destroyed that idea. So, you know, nature doesn't play by any man's rules. <laughs> but <laughs> I just thought that was really funny that I was like, wow, that's such a novel and amazing idea. Why has no one done this before? And I was like, oh, yeah, OK, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, when we have no rhinos one day, it's going to be the fault of the termites. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't possibly be the fault of man. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, we basically then had a chat about why this was so. And one of the things is that termites produce so much heat because they're the original little mushroom farmers. They have this really awesome symbiotic relationship with a fungus. And basically they use the fungus for all of their food needs. And in order to keep the fungus alive, they do all sorts of really cool things like up to literally picking up the fungus, taking it up to the sun so that it can photosynthesize more or get whatever nutrients it needs from the sun and then taking it back down into their little termite mounds. And another thing they do to keep these little fungi alive is that they make sure that the fungi always have water because, you know, the fun guy at the party is always drunk. No. <laughs> wow, this is a very cheesy. This is a very cheesy day, guys. I'm sorry. But anyway, you can't you can't expect me to use fun guy the whole time and not actually make make a terrible pun about it. So, I mean, that's what you're here for. You you know it. Anyway, the fun guy then get water and they're happy and they grow. And a side effect of this is that trees also like water so often in the savannah you'll see an amazing little tree with like a little tranquil kind of sea next to it with a whole bunch of shade and 
a termite hill. And the thing is, a termite hill is not just about giving nutrients to the fungi and themselves. They also provide a home that later provides food for anteaters or artfarks. And the, after that, after the artfark gets hold of their, their beautiful termite mound and makes a hole like you see in the bottom left of my picture, then mongies move in. Typically dwarf mongies in South Africa in like the Kruger Park region. And oh, my paper tore. But anyway, back to the important stuff. <laughs> They live there. And after that, I mean, birds live in the trees, bugs live in the trees. So they build this amazing ecosystem. And I thought that it would be really cool to show how packing dirt can build an entire ecosystem and how an entire ecosystem can live off termites and they need to have fungi around. So yeah, I hope that you have an awesome day and good luck. See you tomorrow. Thank you.